Hello my fellow working class heroes, good day. I am Carlo and welcome to Carlo Excels. These are the objectives of this episode. Today we're gonna learn about the sum if and the average if functions. These two functions work almost exactly the same, except the sum if sums and the average if averages. First, we're gonna talk about the function definitions of these two functions and then we're gonna talk about their basic applications. First, let's have the sum if function definition for Microsoft Excel's own help document. The sum if function, you use the sum if function to sum the values in a range that meet criteria that you specify. For the sum if function, the function name is sum if, and the function arguments are the range, the criteria, and the sum range. Next, we have the average if function from Microsoft Excel's own help document. You use the average if function to average the values in a range that meet criteria that you specify. For the average if function, the function name is average if, and the function arguments are range, criteria, and average range. Before we continue, let me first state that it may be advantageous for you if you first watch our videos on the basic logical operators of Excel and the countif function. Videos or the links to the videos are in the description down below. So right now, we're at my Microsoft Excel screen. So we have here our fictional names of students, uh, all 200 of them, and then we have their contribution to the class funds. So the class funds contribution of these students are listed here, and these class fund contributions can range from maybe 50 pesos all the way to 150 pesos. So say for example, what you want to do is, you want to take the contributions of everybody who has uh, contributed greater than 100 pesos. You want, to, you want to add all of their contributions, the contributions of those who have uh, contributed greater than 100 pesos. And then you also want to add the contributions of those who have contributed 100 pesos. 100 pesos or less and then you want to compare the two so of course you can do this manually if you want to say for example um, based on lessons that we already learned in the past you can simply highlight all of these and then you can simply uh, you can simply sort them from greatest contributions to lowest contributions and then you can simply use the sum function say for example uh, the sum of the contributions greater than 100 are from here all the way to here 101 all the way to here and then the sum of those who contribute contributed 100 pesos or less is from uh here all the way to down here and then you have your results but what if you did not want to do it manually? What if you need a formula to be able to do this so that once you change somebody's class funds contribution, like for example, somebody uh, somebody adds their contribution, the result is going to come out uh, automatically over here. That is where the sum function comes in. What the sum function can actually do is it can simply check each and every number and based on a criteria that you can, that you specify, it will only add the numbers that follow the criteria. So let's try the sum, fun uh, the sum if function in this case. So let's put in the uh, function name sum if like this. And then we put in the uh, open parenthesis. The first thing that the sum if function is going to look for, as you can see here on the screen, the first argument that it's going to look for is the range. In other words, it's going to look for that array of values that you want the sum if function to check. So we want the sum if function to check all of these values over here. And then that is going to be our range. The next thing that we want to do, or the next thing that uh, Microsoft Excel is looking for, is the criteria. So we put a comma so we can enter the criteria. The criteria is that uh, condition uh, wherein you tell Microsoft Excel if this happens to any of the values of the range, then you add that. So what we want to do is, as you can see here, we want to add values that are greater than 100. We want to uh, count it as part of the calculation. So this is how you do it. Just like what we did in our previous lesson, in the count if function lesson, this is how you do the criteria. First, you start with the uh, quotation mark like this. And then we want to tell Microsoft Excel anything greater than 100, we want to add as a part of the criteria and then you put a closing quotation mark and that is your criteria next microsoft excel is going to look for the sum range the sum range is the range in which microsoft excel is going to look for the values that are going to be added however you will see here that we already highlighted the range that we want 
uh, that uh, the range that contains the values that we want to add. In this case, the range for criteria is also the same as the range of values that we want to add. So in other words, we don't actually need to put a sum range if that is uh, the case. So you can see there that the sum range has brackets in it, which means it is not needed if it is, uh, you don't have to put it in if it's not needed. So we can simply put in close quotation marks and then we press a uh, close parenthesis rather and then that's the sum if function, then we press enter. So if you can remember from a while ago, this is exactly the same value that we got when we tried to add this manually. So what Microsoft Excel did was, based on the criteria, uh, greater than 100 criteria that you can see here in the formula bar, it looked, it looked at the range that you see over here, it looked at the range, and then tried to check each and every number. Is this number greater than 100? Is this number greater than 100? What about this number? What about this number? If the number is greater than 100, then it adds that. It does this until the very bottom part of the criteria range. So what about if we want to add the what about if we want to add the values that are 100 pesos or less? Well, how would we do that with the sum function? So we put in here equals and then call upon the sum if function like so. Now just like what we did a while ago, this is the range of cells that we're going to use. And then the criteria is going to be written like this. Once again, we already did this with the count if function. So uh, we put in first a quotation, uh, quotation marks like this. And then we put in less than or equal to. That's how you write it based on our lessons on the basic logical operators. Less than or equal to 100. And then close quotation marks. And then close parenthesis like this. So what you're essentially asking Microsoft Excel to do, uh, what you're asking Microsoft Excel to do is, um, use the sum function, look for anything less than or equal to 100 in this range of cells, and if it follows that criteria, add that. So when you press enter, that is the result we're going to get. Next, let's try this. This time, we want to add uh, the class funds contributions of everybody who contributed 80 pesos or greater. In other words, greater than or equal to 80. So let's try that with the sum if function using the same procedure that we did a while ago. So sum if like this. And once again, this is the range. This is the range like so. Whoops. The range over here. And then the criteria is once again, greater than or equal to 80. So quotation mark like this, greater than or equal to 80, close quotation mark, close parenthesis. So that is how the formula will look like. And then we press enter. The answer will be 15,216. Next, we want to add uh, all of the values that are less than 80. So using the same procedure we did a while ago, equals sum if, and once again, this is the range of cells like so. And then the criteria again this time is uh, less than 80. So quotation mark, less than sign, 80, close quotation mark, close parenthesis, press enter, and that is our answer. All right, let's try something different. What if we want our criteria to, based, uh, to be based on a cell reference? So what we want to do is, we want to uh, use a sum if function to find uh, the sum of values that are greater than x or that are less uh, equal to x or less than x over here. But x is something that we want to dynamically specify. So in other words, any number that we put in here, uh, these values will adjust accordingly. So let's try that. First, we call upon the sum if function. And once again, this is going to be our range. Now, because we're going to use cell references in this case, the criteria is going to be a little bit different. First, we start with the quotation mark. And then because we're looking for greater than x, all right, greater than the cell reference we're going to put there later, greater than sign, and then close quotation mark. And then we have the ampersand symbol over here. So the ampersand symbol, as you can see right here. And then we click on the cell that we want to use as a cell reference over here. And then close parenthesis and then press enter. Next, let's try this one over here less than or equal to x or less than or equal to this cell reference here so sum if function like so and once again this is going to be the range of cells and then for the criteria this is what it's going to look like for uh, less than or equal to so quotation mark less than or equal to 
close quotation mark, and then we use the ampersand symbol like this. You can see the ampersand symbol. For those who cannot find the ampersand symbol, it is the symbol above uh, number seven on your keyboard. So the ampersand symbol, and then the cell reference. So we click that to get a cell reference, close parenthesis, and then press enter. Now, because of how we set the cell references in the summary function, these two summary functions are now dynamic in the sense that it will change depending on what we put here as x. So if we put in here 100, for example, this is greater than 100 and this is 100 or less or less than or equal to 100. If we put in here 75, for example, then the values here change based on the number here. Or we put in here 95, for example, the numbers change again. So that is how you use the sum if function. If the range, uh, if the area for the range, uh, sorry, for if the criteria, the range for the criteria and the range uh, that you're going to add is the same. Now we have this next sheet right here. We have the exact same 200 fictional names of students, but this time we have grades, all right? So we have their grades, and this time we're going to use the average if function. Now you don't have to worry so much because if you were paying attention during our uh, introduction, I mentioned there that the sum if function and the average if function, they work exactly the same. The only difference is the sum function, the sum if function sums, and the average if function averages. So in this case, the procedures that we did a while ago for the sum if function is exactly the same as the procedures we're gonna do for the average if function. So first up, we want to average the grades of everyone who has uh, any grade greater than 90. And then we also want to average anybody who got 90 or less. So the average grade of uh, anybody who had a grade of uh, greater than 90 would look like this. Calling upon the average if function like this, average if. So once again, you're looking for the range, the criteria, and the average range. And once again, since the range is the exact same, the range for the criteria is exactly the same range as the values that we want to average, we don't need the average range for this case. So range is going to be these values right here. And criteria is, just like what we did with the sum if function a while ago, greater than 90. So quotation mark, greater than symbol, 90, close quotation mark, close parenthesis, and you have that number. For all of the grades that are 90 or less, we do this. Average if, like this. So once again, this is the range. Then we put the comma to go to the criteria uh, argument. So once again, the criteria is uh, quotation mark less than or equal to 90. And then close quotation mark, close parenthesis, enter. So we now have these values. So the average grade of everybody who's, uh, who had a grade of uh, greater than 90 is 94.24. And anybody who had a grade of 90 or less their average grade is 80.06. Next, let's try this. 75 or greater, in other words, the average grade of everybody who passed and you have less than 75, in other words, the average grade of everybody who failed. So, let's try the first one. Average grade of everybody who passed. So, average if, average if, over here. Once again, this is the range here. This is the criteria. The criteria is uh, 75 or greater. So in other words, uh, open quotation mark, uh, greater than or equal to 75, like this, and then close parenthesis. So 85.73 is our answer over here. And for uh, less than 75, once again, average if, once again, this is the range. And then we want quotation mark less than 75, Close quotation, close parenthesis, press enter, and that will be our result. Next, just like what we did a while ago, we want our result this time to be dynamic based on a cell reference. In other words, we want uh, Microsoft Excel to average uh, grades that are X or greater and at the same time less than X based on uh, the value that we put in here on uh, this cell reference here X. And again, the procedure here is exactly the same as what we did a while ago with the sum if function. So let's do this. First, for x or greater, average if, like this. Once again, the range is from here all the way to here. And then for the criteria, once again, this is what we do. Since this is x or greater, so in other words, this is greater than or equal to x. So, quotation mark, greater than or equal to sign, 
close quotation mark, and then the ampersand symbol. And then once again, we click on this cell reference to get this cell reference. And then uh, close parenthesis and then press enter. So it's still uh, giving us the divide by zero uh, symbol, but uh, just hang on for a bit. Next, we have uh, less than x. So average if like this, open parenthesis, this is the range over here. And then we have our criteria. And this time, I, our criteria will be less than x. So less than symbol. Uh, we have the uh, quotation mark first. Less than symbol, quotation mark, ampersand. And then we have this cell reference over here. Then we press enter. Now let's try out our formula. So let's put in here a value for x. So say, for example, we want uh, the grade 85. So the average grade of uh, 85, everybody who has gotten a grade of 85 or greater is this. And anybody who has gotten less than x or less than 85 is this. Or let's try uh, 75. And then we have the exact same uh, result as we had a while ago. So this is how you use the average function. If once again, the range for the criteria is the same range that we're going to average. All right, now let's try something a bit more interesting. Now, in this case, we have uh, fictional populations of a school. So let's say, for example, that this school has uh, grade levels from grade 1 all the way to grade 12. And they are blessed to have around 5 sections per grade level. So you have here uh, the 5 sections for, for grade 1. And these are the number of students for grade 1. These are the number of students for each class of grade 2, grade 3, 4, 5, all the way to grade 12. For grade 12, these are the uh, number of students for each of their strands like this. So this is a list of student populations for this particular school. So let's try this. Say for example, we want to put in a choice here in the department. So we want to enter here either grade school, junior high school, or senior high school. And then once we pick a, gra a, a choice here, either grade school, junior high school, or senior high school, we want the sum of everybody who is in grade school if you pick grade school, or junior high school if you pick, ju if you pick junior high school, senior high school if you pick senior high school. Then we also want to have the average students per class. So in other words, based on the choice we put here, we want the sum or the average of that choice. All right, let's set up this cell first. So let's use data validation to make this a drop-down box. So data validation like this, just like what we learned in a previous uh, lesson already. I'm gonna put that lesson in the descriptions down below, the, le the lesson for uh, data validation. So let's create a list, and this is going to be the source of the list. So let's try it if it works. Yes, it works. You have here either grade school, junior high school, or senior high school. Now, the thing that makes this particular example different from our from our previous examples is this. This time, the range for our criteria is different from the range that we want to sum or average. So this is how we do it. Let's start with the sum if over here. So let's put in the name of the uh, the function. So sum if like this. So it's first looking for the range. Now please take note that the range this is looking for is the criteria range. Take note of that, the criteria range. Now, we're looking for the department, either G A, uh, either GS, JHS, or SHS. We're looking for the department in these groups of uh, group of cells over here. So it's in these cells over here. So this is going to be our range. And once again, when we say range in this case, this is the criteria range. Next argument we have to put in is the criteria. So just like what we mentioned a while ago, we want the criteria to be exactly what we put here in this uh, particular cell reference here, over here in this cell. So in this case, we don't have to put in an equal sign, just like what we did uh, in our lesson on the countif function. We don't have to put in an equal sign. We just need the cell reference for our criteria. So this implies that uh, the sum if function is going to look for whatever is written in J2 in the criteria range. Now, it is in this example that the criteria range is different from the range that we want to sum values in. So this is the criteria range and this is the sum range. Whoops, again. This is the criteria range and this is the sum range right here. So what Microsoft Excel is going to do in this case is it's going to check this uh, range of cells over here. So what Microsoft Excel is going to look uh, look for is it's going to look for SHS. 
Is this SHS? No, it's not. Is this SHS? No, it's not. Is this one? No, it's not. Is this one? No, it's not. So when we go to the bottom part, this is where uh, the SUMIF function is going to start finding SHS entries. So once it finds an SHS entry right here, it is going to look at the number right next to, or in other words, uh, aligned with the SHS uh, data over here, and it's going to add this cell. It's going to include this in the sum of values. So that is how the sum if works if the range, the criteria range is different from the sum range. When we press enter, that is our answer. In this case, what it means is there are 222 students in senior high school. And once we change this grade school, there are 677 students in grade school. And there are 550 students in high school. Next, let's do this for average if. So average if like this, and we do the exact same uh, the exact same procedure as the sum if. In this case, this once again we're looking for the criteria range. So this is the criteria range right here, and the criteria is once again this cell reference right here, and then our range in which we're going to average values is this over here. So please take note, uh, my fellow working class heroes, that. It is very, very important that the criteria range is aligned and has the same size as the range that you're going to either sum or average. So this is the formula and then we press enter and that is our result. So you can see here, grade school has, grade school has uh, 677 total students and an average of around 22.5, 22.6, 22 22.57, I guess students per class high school junior high school on the other hand has 550 students and 27.5 students per class and senior high school has 222 students total and an average of 27.75 students per class so let's try this same procedure but in this case let's not do this for the department not grade school uh, junior high school and senior high school let's do this by grade level so Let's first, uh, let's first do a uh, drop-down list on the cell reference that we're going to use over here. So once again, data validation. Let's create a list. And this is going to be the source of values over here. And then we now have the drop-down list that we're going to need for the next few calculations. So for the sum if function, sum if over here, once again, in this case, in this particular example, this is now what uh, this is now our uh, criteria range because we're looking for the grade level in this case. So this is the criteria range right here. And then our criteria is we want the criteria to be the grade level we're going to input here later. So grade level. And then the sum range is this, the population per class. Oh, right there. As for the average if function, again, same procedure. The only difference is the name of the function. So once again, the criteria range is over here. And then this is the criteria that we're going to follow, this particular cell reference right here. And then the average range or the sum or rather the range of uh, values that we're going to average later based on the criteria is this. This is the range. And then press enter. So based on the values, uh, based on the formulas that we uh, set over here, so once we pick a grade level, for example, grade 1, based on the formulas that we put in here, we can now see that grade 1 has a total of 112 students and has an average of around 22.4 students per class. If we pick, for example, grade 8, this is the data that we have, 140 students and an average of 28 students per class. Or for example, grade 12, then you have this data, 107 students, 26.75 students per class. So that's it for our lesson on the sum if and average if functions. I really hope I earned your subscription today. Once again, I am Carlo and this is Carlo Excels. Thank you very much for watching.